Hey there! Today I'll be showing you guys how to create and modify assets in Unreal Engine using Python. You can do a lot with Unreal Engine's Python API, but to keep this video short, I'll simply create some data assets to give you a general idea of how you can use the Python API to write scripts for your projects. Alright, so the first thing we need to do is create a couple of C++ classes to represent our data. They're the assets we're going to create from our Python script. We're going to call this one DA underscore item. And we'll just put this in the data assets folder. And then we're going to create another data asset. And we'll call this DA underscore shop item. And again, we're going to put it in the data assets folder and create class. All right, so this first item is going to be pretty simple. It's going to represent an item in the game, and it's just going to have a name and a rarity. And of course, the rarity is going to be an enum with four potential values, common, uncommon, rare, and legendary. This second data asset is going to represent an item that is available on some sort of shop. So it's just going to hold a item data asset, which we just defined, and a cost. Now you could just combine these two into one data asset, but I'm separating them for the purposes of this tutorial. All right, now that we have our data assets, let's create our first script. Let's create a new directory called scripts. And inside of it, we'll create a new Python file called asset generator, I guess. First thing we we'll wanna do is just import Unreal. And this is the Python API that I was talking about earlier. That's what we'll use to create and edit assets. Okay, so let's create a function called create item and it's just going to take in an item name and it's going to create a data asset with the item name that we want first we want to get unreal dot asset tools helpers dot get asset tools and we can actually just save this as a variable we'll call this asset tools and let's move this up here so now we can just do asset tools dot create asset and it's going to require a couple of arguments first the name of the asset so let's say we want each asset to be you know prefixed with da underscore item underscore and then the item name the second argument is going to be where you want to output this uh this asset so you know i'll just say game slash items and then we need a couple of special arguments here. We'll need the reference to the class. So to get our DA underscore item class, we can do unreal dot DA underscore item. And by doing this, we reference, you know, our definition of DA underscore item that we define over here. And finally, we need an asset factory. To get that, we can do unreal dot data asset factory. And of course, we can save this as a constant as well. Like that. And boom. We have our function to create our data asset. However, we're not done yet because we want to save uh, some values into that data asset. So let's get the result of create asset and store it in a variable. And we'll call it our new item. And then down here, we can do new item.name equals item name so by saying dot name here we're directly modifying this name property over here and note that it converts the like naming convention in c++ to python so if you have like name plus one you know like uh what is that called like camel case or something not camel case i forget the name but yeah if, if you have like a casing like this it'll actually convert it to python like this so just you know be aware of that but going back to our Python script here, it would be nice if we could say something like new item dot rarity equals, you know, uncommon, but that's actually not going to work because rarity is an enum and there's no direct translation between like our enum here and Python. So we'll come back to this. Um, but for now, let's keep going and just save our new asset. So we can do unreal.editor asset library dot save loaded asset and you pass in the asset that you want to save. 
great. And then at the bottom here, this is what we'll actually get run. Cause remember this is just defining a function. So down here we can say like, you know, creating items and we'll call our function and pass in a name. I don't know, sword. Okay, now that our script is done, let's recompile and run our editor so that we have our latest changes to our data assets here. Next, click on tools, execute Python script, select our script. And if you look at the log, you'll see that it printed creating items. And you can see that the data asset was actually created with the sword name filled in. Okay, so let's say we want to create our sword with the rarity of legendary. We need to create some helper functions in our data asset class here to allow the script to set the rarity by an integer instead of an enum because like I said, there's no direct translation between our enum here and any kind of enum we define on Python. So let's create a new function. We'll call this set rarity. It's gonna take in an integer, rarity that so if the new rarity is within you know our enum values then we can just cast the the integer into our rarity enum the last thing we need to do is mark this function as a u function that is blueprint callable this will allow the script to actually call the function so let's go ahead and do that Going back to our script here, I will call set rarity and we'll pass in an integer value of three because three should correspond with the enum value of legendary. So let's rerun the editor and test out the script. In our editor, I'm just gonna delete the items directory that was made before and we can rerun the asset generator Python script we have we open up the sword asset and you can see that our rarity is set to legendary. Perfect. Okay, well that pretty much wraps up our first script on creating a data asset. The next script that we're gonna write is simply gonna find these data assets by name and create our shop items so that they have the items linked to them as well as costs. I've gone ahead and created three new um, items, hammer, with a common rarity, shield with an uncommon rarity, and of course sword with our legendary. And what I want the script to do is read all of the assets in this items folder and create shop items that have, you know, this item linked to it and the cost based off of the rarity. Okay, let's create a copy of this generated file here. I'll just control C, control V, and we'll call this um, shop item generator and let's see what we need to change here we're going to create a shop item and all that's really going to change is the prefix here the directory shop items the you know the asset class so da underscore shop item and of course these values here are going to be different so instead of name and rarity we want to set the item and cost so cost is easy right we can just do new item dot cost equals say like 50 or something but what's tricky here is this 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 property here item because it is a pointer to a item data asset Similar to how we created a function to help us out uh, and set the rarity, we can create a function here in our shop item class to get a shop item by name. So, sorry, not a shop item, but an item by name. So I'm gonna say get item by name. It's gonna take in a constant f string item name. And we're simply gonna call find object of type UDA item in any underscore package and pass in the item name. 
And of course, don't forget the U function uh, macro with the blueprint callable argument. Okay, now with our helper function, we can set the new item dot item to be equal to new item dot get item pi name. And we'll pass in this prefix here because remember uh, our asset has this, this this string in the name and then the sword and then we're going to save the asset instead of hard coding a cost of 50 though let's make things a little more interesting so let's create a rarity cost map this is essentially just going to map every single rarity to a cost value so the rarity of zero is common and it'll be a cost of say 100 uncommon maybe 150 rare is going to be like 300 and legendary let's say a thousand so then what we could do is say the new item dot cost is going to be equal to the new item dot item dot get rarity dot value this will give us you know a value from zero to three and we're going to look that value up in our cost map but you might be wondering, well, where is this get rarity function coming from? We actually need to add it. So under our set rarity, we're gonna create a new, you know, blueprint callable function. It's gonna return an e rarity, get rarity, and it's just gonna return rarity just like that. Before we run this, let's move this line up so that our new item the item actually exists. And let's create a few more shop items. We'll do the hammer and the shield. And now if we run the script, we'll see that it was unable to find the data asset. I sometimes run into this issue. I'm not exactly sure why, but one thing we could do is manually open these assets. So I open up this sword and the other two, I don't know why it's super small like this, but as you can see, I open the assets and I'm gonna rerun the script and hopefully it'll work this time. Looks like it did because boom, it has our sword, our cost. Um, and that all looks good. It looks like the cost is in fact based off the rarity and it's all linked up. Okay, well that pretty much wraps up this video. There are tons of ways in which you could expand this script to you know, better fit your needs and improve your workflow. But this is just kind of an example that I hope you guys could use to kind of build off of in the future. And yeah, if you think of any really interesting use cases for this, definitely leave a comment down below um, because I, I love this kind of stuff. Uh, just like improving workflows, automation, scripting, that kind of thing. So yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Anyway, if you found this video helpful, please leave a like and consider subscribing. Thanks.